morning, everyone. Morning. We are all welcome to this act of worship. Special welcome to our visitors and special welcome to our family who are following us on social media. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we just want to thank you, O oh God, for affording us this time to be in your presence, O oh God. We thank you that you have started, we've begun the, the Lenten season, and we know that you are here to humble us, to teach us, and to grow our faith. We pray, O oh Holy Spirit, that as we fellowship together, may your spirit be in our midst. Touch each one of us, O oh God. Heal us, O oh God and meet us at our area of needs. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to celebrate birthdays for Mecha, Cecilia, and Masase. If they're here with us, happy birthday. Are they here with us? If you are home, happy birthday. And wedding anniversaries for those who be having when they as anniversaries this week. Happy anniversary. We are going to sit down and focus on the children now. Thank you. After Jesus was baptized. He went away into the wilderness, a wild and desolate land. There he stayed for forty days, fasting and praying, preparing for his ministry ahead. Jesus would face many tests, but would rise triumphantly. The whole time that Jesus was in the wilderness, he had nothing to eat. For forty days and forty nights, he went without a single meal. Satan knew Jesus was hungry. He saw this as a great opportunity to try and get Jesus to break his fast. If you're really the Son of God, just tell these stones to turn into bread, he said. Jesus was focusing on God and not on himself, and said to Satan, The word of God says that man shall not live by bread only, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Satan was not going to give up that easily. This time, he took Jesus to the highest spot in the temple. If you are the Son of God, jump. Remember, it is written, he will command his angels to take care of you. Jesus replied to Satan, you shall not test the Lord your God. Finally, Satan pulled out his sneakiest temptation yet. He took Jesus to a high mountain from which they could see all the kingdoms of the world. Then Satan said, I'll give it all to you, Jesus. Everything. It's yours. All you have to do is bow and worship me. At that instant, Jesus rebuked Satan in a strong and powerful voice. Be gone, Satan. The scriptures state that you shall worship the Lord God and serve him only. Immediately, Satan fled from Jesus. His evil plans of temptation had no power over the Son of God. Jesus would remain sinless unto his death on the cross, where he paid for the sins of all mankind, thereby defeating, once and for all, sin and death. After Jesus' resurrection, God exalted him to the highest honor and placed everything under his authority. He 
hear the commandments which God has given to his people and take them to heart. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Lord, you shall not make an idol of anything and worship it. Amen. Lord, you shall not make wrong use of the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Lord, Remember the lost day and keep it holy. Amen. Lord, Honor your father and mother. Amen. Lord, You shall not commit murder. Amen. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord, you shall not steal. Amen. Lord, you shall not give false evidence. Amen. Lord, you shall not prevent the possessions of others. Amen. Lord, Have you been reminded about the Ten Commandments? Let us bring our minds before Christ and let these commandments speak to us this morning. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins. Firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with our name. Almighty God, my heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own faults, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have done. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past and grant us to be saved in the midst of life. And may the Almighty God who gives our Lord truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon us our sins and set us free from them, confirm us and in us in all goodness, and give us an eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray the collect together. God of our salvation, Walk in the clouds, proclaim your covenant with every living creature. Grant us your spirit, renew us in your baptism, and make us faithful stewards of your creation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one Lord, now and forever. Amen. Our next psalm this morning is Psalm. Sorry, I'm already going to read Psalm. God said, 
This is the sign of the covenant which I establish between myself and you and every living creature with you to endless generations. My bow I set in the cloud, sign of the covenant between myself and earth. When I cloud the sky over the earth, the bow shall be seen in the cloud. Then will I remember the covenant which I made between myself and you, and living things of every kind. Never again shall the waters become a flood to destroy all living creatures. The bow shall be in the cloud. When I see it, it will remind me of the everlasting covenant between God and living things on earth of every kind. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant which I made between myself and all that lives on earth. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm this morning is Psalm 25. We read from verses 1 through to 10. I will read the even verses and please respond with the I mean I will read the old verses and you respond with the even verses. In you, O Lord, my God, have I been my home. In you have I trusted. Let, not, let me not be ashamed, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. In you have I hoped all the day long, because of your goodness, O Lord. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions, but according to your mercy, think of me. The meek he will guide in the path of justice and teach the humble his ways. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading. From verse Peter, chapter 3, starting from verse 18. First Peter, chapter 3, starting from verse 18. For Christ also suffered once for the sins, the righteous of the unrighteous to bring to you God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. After being made alive, he went and made a proclamation to the imprisoned spirit. To those who were disobedient long ago, when we were waiting to catch and bring in the days of Lord, while the ark was being built. In it only a few people, eight in all, were saved through us. And this was all the symbolized baptism that now saved you. Also, not the removal of death from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience to us all. It saved you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, 
who had gone into heaven and at God's right hand, with angels in authority and power and submission to him. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. stand for our Continue, that we should continue 
as we continue through the journey of holding on our theme, the theme which is holding on to our confession, we need to be determined to learn from Jesus and also to learn from Elijah on the third of the way in which they are walking through. That, that as we are the body of Christ, we need to model ourselves and to fix our, life, our eyes just like the way Elisha fixed his eyes to Elijah when Elijah was going to heaven, was being taken, was being taken to heaven. Elisha was focused on his goal, the goal in which he only wanted a down portion of Elijah, Elijah's spirit. That is by being determined, that, that is by walking through the, the road of being determined. That we all pull through, that we all pull through in life if our eyes are fixed in Him. Today marks the first Sunday in Lent season. Hence, I want us to focus under the same prayer. But first, before I go to the theme of today, let us start by, by giving a definition of what is Lent about. This Lent season, which we find ourselves into, as today is the first Sunday in Lent season. Lent season is started on Ash Wednesday, building up to the 40 days to Easter Sunday. This is a reflection, this is a time of reflection in which Jesus went into the wilderness to fast for 40 days and 40 nights, while he was also undergoing some trials. For Christian, Lent season is not a season of celebration, rather, is a process of prayer, and Lent season is an opportunity to cultivate the interior life through spiritual exercise and practice. Amen. It is a time for prayer which is a dialogue between one and God. It was a time for prayer which was a dialogue between Jesus and God while he was fasting for 40 days. It is a time of prayer, heading into this gospel, we hear of Jesus being led to the wilderness for fasting. I like the way in which the gospel of St. Mark puts it like, it says, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil, and after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. If you didn't get it, I hope you managed to, to see the Sunday school story. It, is, it, is, it explains the story much better. Then you should start by teaching Sunday school every day. Why 40 days? Some half of the, some half of the scholars of theology compare Jesus with Moses based on the book of Deuteronomy saying that even Moses also fasted 40 days in the mountain twice. First, it was when he was preparing himself to receive Ten Commandments. And secondly, it was when he came back from mountain and found people worshipping idols. They say this is in parallel with the story of Jesus, because Jesus also went to the mountain to the wilderness to fast 40 days and 40 nights. And when he came back, his first sermon, he, he, he prayed on the mountain because it was of the new commandment. Hence the question is why is that? Could Jesus be Moses? Yes. Jesus was there from the beginning when the world was created. The, the number 40 symbolizes also 40 years in which the Israelites were wandering in the desert. The number 40 in a Christian life, it is a huge symbol. It symbolizes a huge things. 
and for the day it will use next time. Jesus' found is teaching that before he takes up the yoke which his father they sent him to come and accomplish, uh, to, and, and accomplish here on, on, on earth, he found it that it's better for him to undergo a prayer, a prayer time. A time in which he was talking to his father, Jesus was in quarantine, if I can say. I thought this word is a new word which came with COVID. But as I was looking, I found that the word quarantine has been there and it has been happening. But this is not for the time of Jesus. Jesus. Jesus was also in quarantine. In quarantine while he was talking to his father. Why was he laid there? Because he had to undergo so we need to undergo a time of prayer before we take on the yoke which the Lord, which God is sending to come and do. We need to undergo there so that we can put on the body armor before he comes fully and do his ministry here on earth. So that there could not be even one in the spirit that could come and stay with him or test him. We heard from the Sunday school, from the, from the Sunday school lesson that Satan went there to test him several times. But Jesus, based on the words from the book of Deuteronomy, he was not he was not even shaken, or or his face was not even moved, or his eyes was not even moved from his mission. He continued to fix his eyes on his determination in prayer. The way they tried to test him to say if he's strong enough, and indeed he failed. Therefore, my sisters and brothers, it is not easy, and it is not easy. It is not easy as we hear that as Jesus, the Son of God, who is true, who is fully God also, was being tested while we're in prayer. But it is still us, just us today. That as we undergo this time of prayer in our life, there will be a time when temptations, there will be a time when devil will come and disturb you. I'm just glad that if I was to call on the testimonials of the fasting we had earlier this year, Maduro took us to tell different stories here today. Being fit in prayer or being focused in prayer, it comes with challenges in life, challenges that are always there to take your focus away from your dialogue with the Father. Do. It means we have to be fully rooted. We have to fully rooted in, in God, in prayer. We have to be fully Christian who are focused on what we are doing. Temptations will always come, especially when you undergo fasting. When you are fasting, when you are talking to God, trials will always be there to take their attention away. And was all the fasting it is needed. In the busy schedule of, 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 of your day, or in the busy schedule of your calendar, spend some time and you go for fasting. You go to the time for fasting when you'll be talking to God in prayer. And they say there is no greater way for which is stronger than the prayer. Hence, we need to devote ourselves into a prayer. You need to be a prayerful person in order, in order to fight all challenges that we face in life. In this sense, a Christian who does not pray is a weak one. Because all these trials, because all the evil spirits will always pray you see what you say. A Christian, if you're a Christian person, you need to put on the body armor. And the body armor, which is a prayer, 
we need to be praying for people. As I draw to conclusion, I want to challenge you that during this season of Lent, please spend some time in the in the busy schedule of your day, where you spend some time for you to for you to pray. When you spend some time for a prayer, when you spend some time for you to have a conversation with God, I know we all need that busy. But just spend a few minutes to talk to God. How many of us do we pray in our daily business? During the business of our day. How many of us do we spend time to talk to God? Today we find Jesus go to the town, go to the mountain to get time to talk with God on his own. How many of us are we willing to use this length season of 40 days as much as 40 days? How many days? 40 days for you to talk to God. And should we stop after them? No, you should not stop. You should continue to nourish your conversation with God and He's never busy to listen to you. He's never busy to give you the ear. All He wants is you to come to Him, to submit yourself to Him fully in prayer. God is there waiting for you. What change are you going to do? With this season of Lent of 40 days. Amen. Amen. God, we come seeking mercy and grace. Let us find it as we repent and turn to you. As we draw close to you, please show us how to live a life that seeks righteousness and mercy. Teach us, O oh Lord, to learn and uphold how your servant David embraced the power of prayer. As we learn to live on you, Lord, Teach us to submit and surrender so that we can be able to wait upon you. David taught us that it's only through developing a prayerful spirit and being intent in one's prayer that one will be able to lift the weight brought about by the cares and pleasures of this world. Afford us the opportunity to follow suit. Lord, we are ready to receive guidance and correction from you. We are prepared, Heavenly Father, to know your ways, your paths, and your truth. We are willing to commit to you, O Lord. Redeem us, O Lord, from despair, sin, afflictions of our health and cares of this life. Lord, remember not our offenses, nor the offenses of our fathers. Spare us with love, spare your people whom you have redeemed with your precious blood. Go before us, Lord, in all our doings with your most gracious favor and encourage us with your continual care that in all our ways, begun, continue, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name 
and finally by your mercy obtain the fullness of eternal life. During this period of Lent, alas, allow us, Lord, to reflect upon our relationship with you. Implore us, O oh Lord, to be in constant contact with you, offering every situation that we find ourselves in unto you. Teach us to internalize the fact that as we constantly get in touch with you, Lord, you will always be alongside us and ready to listen. When our Lord Jesus' disciples requested him to teach them how to pray in Luke 11, his response was very simple. Whenever you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us stand for peace.
Brothers, as we await the coming of Christ our Savior, in the glory and triumph of this kingdom, we may daily grow into his life.
everybody. Good morning, children. If you see this book, you'll think I'm here to keep you all day. But that's not the idea. Thank you, Dean Dawson, Ruth, Ray, John, Simon, and the service for a lovely service this morning. And to all of you for joining us. May our numbers continue to increase. Amen. Right, all the notices you will find on our WhatsApp group. If any of you are not on that WhatsApp group, please see me after the service so I can record your cell numbers so that we can include you. Because that's our, our means of communication at the moment. We also have posted up a list of wards and leaders. Please communicate with each other. If your ward leader hasn't contacted you, please contact them. Their numbers also have also been posted on the WhatsApp group. We just want to keep the family together in these difficult times. Okay. As I say, all the notices are in the WhatsApp group. Please read them. If you have any questions, we have to answer them for you. One import, two important um, new norms, okay. Baptism, we are allowed now to carry on with baptisms in consultation with families. Um, please speak to Dean Darcy or Maruti Rendani to arrange for a baptism of your child or children if you want that to happen. And then confirmation. We will be having confirmation this year. We just can't give you the date, but for both baptism and confirmation, there are forms at the back of the church. Please take one if you need one. Right, and for those who are watching online, if you've missed today's service, on the pew leaflet, you will see we are offering a number of services during the week. There's Eucharist on Sunday and Wednesday. There's morning services, morning and on the Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday, and also evening prayer. Monday to Friday. <coughs> so please, if you've missed a service and you're in the vicinity at one of those times, please pop in and join Dean Darcy and the team for prayers. Right, and then I hope Dean Darcy is closing again. <laughs> <coughs> All I seem to do on the WhatsApp group is ask for <laughs> donations. But please remember the Women's World Day of Prayer, Shrove Tuesday we've had, but then more importantly, our Easter offering. We are collecting for our Dean to say thank you to her for what she has done for us during the few months that she's been with us. But please give generously and remember with all your EFT payments, just mark them clearly for what they are. Women's World Day of Prayer, WWDP, or Shrove Tuesday Shrove, or the Easter offering, Easter off. Thank you. And then, last but not least, Maruti Rendani is to be ordained as a priest on Saturday. The service will take place at 11 o'clock on Saturday, here in the cathedral. Attendance is by invitation only, but please keep him in your prayers, pray for him, his family, and we look forward to welcoming him back as our priest on Sunday. <laughs> I'd like you just all to stand, please. I just want to say prayer for all our ordination candidates. God our Father, the Shepherd of Israel, you entrust to your church the care of your people. 
Watch over your servants now preparing for the ministry of word and sacrament. Fill them with faith, hope and love, and make them steadfast in prayer. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please go in peace to love and serve you all. Yeah. 